is American muscle. That thing's about to get eaten for lunch. Killer off the lights. Killer. Ah, Down here, baby. Oh, it sounds good. Pull game tight in this car. Underground, baby. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. And behind me is the definition of American muscle. 2021 Dodge Charger RT. Today we're gonna take it for a little spin and we're gonna see, is this car really all it's made out to be? Does it give you that emotion? Does it give you that nice loud V8 sound? Is it practical? Is it heavy? Is it expensive? We're gonna find out all of that in the next half an hour. Stay tuned. Don't click off, watch right through this video. All right, so to kick it all off, let's talk a little bit about Dodge. Dodge is, for me, known as very, very, you know, straight line performance. I think of, I think of the drag strip. I think of tons of horsepower when I think of Dodge. Um, I think of big V8s. Um, I love, I love the, the brand, I love what they sort of stand for, um, and I do love that they've been doing what they've been doing for a long time and staying true to what they do, building, you know, pretty decent cars with big horsepower, big torque, big engines. So in keeping to that theme of big torque, big engines, big power, behind me is the Charger RT. And so the RT kind of fits, I'd say right in, in between the different trims. There's a lot of different trims. And I'd say this is kind of the sweet spot. And the reason I say it's a sweet spot is because it's got just enough styling, right? You see that beautiful um, hood scoop. You see the nice little accents at the bottom, the yellow accents kind of, you know, mean business. Nice big gnarly tires on there, right? And I don't know if you can see that badging, Hemi. Hemi is signifying that big V8 engine. The, the powertrain, right? Uh, so going back to what I was saying, the, the trim levels, you can get an XST, you can get a GT, you can get this one right here, an RT. Um, you can move up one from there and you can get a scat pack. You can go wide body scat pack. And then we get into the real serious stuff. The SRT Hellcat wide body pushing 700 plus horsepower. The next one up is the SRT Hellcat red eye wide body. Okay, and that one's 797 horsepower. And then the newer one, which I actually don't know what this one is. It's called the SRT Jailbreak. If someone knows what this one is, is about, um, it just seems like they're just putting out new ones over and over and over again. Uh, but the Jailbreak, which is the top of the line uh, car. I don't even know if it has a better engine or if it just has like some, maybe some fit and finishes or some of that or little package that they've included to go the drag strip on. A little synopsis about Dodge, okay? So Dodge, very known for their Hemi engines, um, which is, it's an unmistakable engine, right? It's not always super, super powerful, but it's, it's you can't mistake it. It's very sort of loud. It's got a very powerful sort of sound to it. Um, and it's only really replicated, I'd say, by the, you know, the GT350 uh, and the GT500 by Shelby. Right? There's nothing really else that makes that nice thunderous sort of sound. And cue the exhaust. If 
first Charger ever debuted was in 1966, okay? From there, it was refreshed in 2021, uh, and it featured a much more elegant sort of style that paid homage to the legendary second generation Charger, okay? While also featuring a more refined sort of high quality cabin, okay? The powertrain at launch consisted of Chrysler's new 292 horsepower, 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. Pentastar, very, very sort of, you know, famous in the automotive world back in the day. Um, it also had an upgraded 5.7 liter V8 Hemi, which what you're looking at right here, 370 horsepower, and then the new 6.4 liter Hemi with, four, uh, with a V8, obviously, 470 horsepower. So the car originally had a five-speed auto, uh, but it was quickly replaced by an eight-speed automatic. Okay, this one has paddle shifters on it. Transmission's not super, super quick, but when it does hit into, into the next gear, from first to second, second to third, if you get it when you're, when you're really building up that, that engine, when you're really building up the revs, it hits hard. It's really, really nice. Uh, in 2025, the car was facelifted. Okay, and then the Hellcat was launched. Oh yeah, R, R, R. 6.2 liter V8 with 707 horsepower. Okay, giving the car a zero to 60 sprint in 3.7 seconds. And then the quarter mile is done in 11.8 seconds at 123.4 miles per hour. That's fast. This is a family car, look at this. It's a big car, you can get your, your family comfortably in it. You can get a lot of storage in the back and this thing's going zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds, that's a bullet. In 2021, the Charger Hellcat Red Eye was added. Let's, well, you know, we got 700 horsepower in our car, we call it the Hellcat, that's not enough. Let's go to the next level, let's introduce the Hellcat. Now the Hellcat wide body, okay? A wide body is just gonna give it a little bit more of a planted stance and help to put the power down a little bit more, a little bit more gnarly tires. These cars are obviously rear wheel drive. Uh, 797 horsepower in the Red Eye, 203 top speed. This is obviously the 2021 Charger RT with the, with the Hemi in it. It's got the big engine. Um, it MSRPs for $41,500. $41, and I say it all the time, I'm gonna keep saying it, there's no replacement for displacement, okay? You can't beat a V8 engine. God, they sound amazing. Just living with this thing day to day, just doing pulls all day, all day, all day. Hasn't gotten old. My gas, uh, gas fuel gauge has gone down mighty quick, but the pulls are still tons and tons of fun. So if you're gonna get a car like this, make sure you can afford to uh, put a lot of fuel in it, uh, assuming you're driving it the way it should be driven. Uh, so this paint, nice, nice silver paint, it's called Triple Nickel. Okay, it's finished with 20 inch satin carbon aluminum wheels. Okay, nice big 20 inch. Got your calipers there. Okay, we got that nice little yellow sort of finish. It's kind of like a motorsport sort of sort of thing. Or like something, something that is probably reminiscent to the drag strip. If anyone knows where these kind of originated, what those are for, some people hate them, some people love them, but I feel like they're they're, they've, they've got a functional sort of use, or they're, they're like, they're derived of something from history. There's a nice Dodge logo in there, very nice and sleek, all right? A lot of air getting in there through, to the engine, really important. A lot of air coming through there as well, through the bottom. These are all functional vents, really, really important vents, right? If you don't get air to the engine, you're, just, you're gonna blow it up, right? It needs to be cool. These, these engines get really, really hot. They need to be cooled down. Uh, the tires, gnarly, gnarly thick tires. We're running 20, uh, 245, 45 ZR20s, all season performance tires. Bang. Get her up. Look at that. This is literally, this is why you buy this bad boy. Look at how beautiful that looks. 5.7 liter V8, baby, V8. Nice and clean in here as well. Looks good, there's all your fluids, everything you need. Your leaves over there. I've been hooning on it quite a bit though, so she's, uh, you can feel the, you can feel the heat coming off of it. Uh, but she runs good. She runs really, really nice. Let's shut her down. All right, so there you go. Get a look at that key. All right. Really cool function here is that if you hit that twice, it's got automatic start stop, which is super cool. 
you can you can give it a nice rip cold start as you walk up to it which i find really really cool uh, it's menacing when it's when it's cold so coming into the interior here something about this car that you're going to notice well i'm going to bring to you is that it's extremely spacious extremely spacious it's a nice big family car anyone who's got big tall legs or is you know a big big type of guy or, or woman this is a great car for for someone that needs the space right uh this is this is apple carplay pretty standard right to uh to all dodge products you got all your gears in here let's give it a couple of bangs yeah that's menacing menacing that's why you buy the whip uh you got all your stuff here I still haven't really synced up this to the the infotainment system. I can't figure out how to go up volume, track across. It doesn't seem like this stuff kind of works with that very seamless. So something to sort of look into, but um, I, I found myself either reaching for my phone or constantly touching here, and that's, that's not a good thing, I don't think. So you got all your stuff here for your lights. We'll leave it on auto. All right, all this stuff, this whole gauge cluster sort of here is pretty standard, right? Your volume up that you got, we don't want to get copyrighted. You got your um, your air, you want it coming out more, a little bit more. You go there, down, right? Pretty straightforward, right? It's all pretty standard here. There should be some USBs in here. I'm not sure where that was taken out. There should be some USBs there, right? You got a cigarette lighter again. Not sure why those are in every car, but they are. A lot of space here looking down. A lot of space there. Got another um, another charging point port. Excuse me, another uh, um, uh, lighter port. Then you got your USB stuff there, right? This is really really nice here. Nice solid leather for to put your arm down, just to rest your arm on. These are cloth seats. They're bolstered really really well, but they're just the basic cloth seats. So again, I'm a big believer when you're buying these cars to option out some decent seats. You're gonna spend a lot of time in this vehicle, right? So why not why not option them out and be just a little bit more comfortable, right? I think they're probably a grand or 1500 bucks to, to option out. So you got your pretty standard stuff here. What up? You got your lights and stuff. That comes down, bang. All right, take a look back there. Got tons and tons of room back there. Can sit a nice nice three more people very very comfortably let's take a look at all the gauges here pretty straightforward right got your mirror stuff you got your your windows back front these are auto as you're unlock and lock you can child lock it so no one can mess around with the doors in the back pretty cool a lot of space back there the fit and finishing isn't bad it's all cloth this is kind of hard cheap plastic like fake plastic to to resemble uh, leather that's actually leather tons and tons of space back here tons and tons of room got some more usbs all right lots of room for legs right that's that's with me all the way back i'm six feet all right lots and lots of room you could comfortably have your family back here you can pull that open there you got some cups as well all right, go on a nice long trip, nice long road trip if need be. And that's your view to the front. All right, looks good. Let's take a look at the trunk. As we hear that nice exhaust burble, let's open up the trunk and see how much space we're working with here. Gigantic, gigantic, it's like a room in there, look at that. Hopefully you're getting this. Hopefully you're picking up all this on the camera. There's not a lot of like, you know, USBs or anything like that to kind of help you out or like hangers and stuff like that. But you get a huge, huge um, trunk. Really good there. I really like that. Again, this is the family sedan, right? So it's good for trips, good for practicality. All right, driving the Charger RT. Okay, and so there are a few things that come to mind as soon as I get in this car. One is it's super spacious. It's a big car. It's got lots of room. It's practical. It's great. That's the first thing. Second thing is that it's got a big nasty V8 on it. So it's very, it's like the big brother. It's like the bully on the road kind of thing, right? And I, I actually, I love that. I absolutely love that. So in saying that, let me put my window down just a little bit and take in that 
that V8 sound, that, that burble that's kind of always there, always there. It's making you happy every time you put your foot down. Ready? Every time you put your foot down, you get that nice brrrr. Again, the car, pretty big, very practical. I recommend it to anybody that is, you know, it's a little bit larger, has, you know, as tall, as wide, you know, needs a little bit of extra space. The cabin is huge, it's awesome. It's, it's a really, really good car for a bigger person. Um, so there's that. Um, it's also a great family sedan. You could easily throw two kids, even three kids back there, your family, and go cruising for, you know, for, a, you know, up, 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 up somewhere on a long sort of road trip. Wherever you may go, you can, you can go cruise. It definitely feels heavy when I'm driving it. You know, steering's heavy. I can feel the weight of the car behind me. Uh, and so I wouldn't recommend getting the XST. I wouldn't recommend getting the, the low powered model um, because of the weight. This, this car doesn't feel the weight as much because it's got a huge 5.7 liter V8 in it. As soon as you put your foot down, it's bang, it's gone, right? So it kind of, it, it, it eliminates that huge, huge weight feeling, right? Uh, but you need the big engine to, to sort of, to get that. Styling, I think the car is pretty cool. You know, it's, it's, you know, again, I read you all the history of Dodge and all that. It's, you know, it's a tribute to the older cars and you know, there's a lot of thinking behind how they style it. And, you know, it's 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 got a lot of history behind it, stuff like that. Um, I think they look cool. I think they're very sort of reminiscent of what they are. I think people, you know, see the car and they they know it's a Charger right off the bat, right? It's very like distinguishable, like the Challenger, like the like the Camaro. People know these these uh, vehicles, so that there's there's sort of that which is cool but eventually you need to sort of facelift it it eventually needs to be upgraded so this car has been this model this kind of look since 2015 going on seven years i think it's very very due for for a facelift for an upgrade we're looking at 45 i forget what i said the msrp is you can get one for a lot cheaper than that you can get one for a lot more expensive um fit and finish in that is pretty bare bones it's it's you know it's it's nothing spectacular I think where the money's going on this vehicle is for the engine you're paying for the engine you pay for probably for the, the space of it the size of it um, it's certainly not the fit and finish but again by no means is it is it ugly to look at it just kind of like it's just just pretty sort of basic right you got a lot of soft touch leathers and plastics a lot of cloths and stuff like that so something to think about when you're buying a car like this right you can get so many options in a vehicle like this you can get so many options so maybe considering you know a few different options maybe optioning out some uh you know some of the seats or some of the like you know performance packages and stuff like that but listen to this bad boy she goes listen to this thing she goes she hits hard and so I put it on the paddles. Obviously the paddle shifters are gonna cost you a lot of gas because you can really get into the transmission. But if you wanna be a bully, you can get into the, the paddles a little bit. But it, it literally, I've gone through a quarter tank of gas, let's say half a tank of gas in one day. Can you believe that? One day on the paddles, up and down, killing it, doing, doing underpass pulls and stuff like that. It's been one day, it's insane. It's super fun. I wouldn't I wouldn't change it. I'm going to continue to do it. So, something to consider when you're buying a big V8 um, is the the fuel uh, fuel economy. But this thing's badass. This thing is badass. I want to talk about the body roll a little bit. You know, heavy car, a lot of power. Um, you get around a corner, this thing, a lot of body roll. Uh, it doesn't handle the, the, the corner super well. It's not meant to be on a track. It's meant for straight line performance. That's basically it. I think we all know that, right? I think the wide body will probably handle a little bit better and put power down a little bit more, but this is straight line. We're not looking to do corners in this car. I do find, and it's not just with this model, but just American cars in general, American muscle cars, that there's a bit of a community. You know, people will roll by me, that guy just there with the XST rolls by me, he's like, what up, man, what up? So it's a bit of a family. Um, you know, some people in different cars, you know, Mercedes, Benz, 
uh, BMW, it's a very pretentious sort of brand. You know, so everyone's selfish. You roll by someone, they're just like, mm, mm, mm. this is a little bit different. I feel like I'm, I'm part of something, which is which is kind of cool. You know, and people acknowledge that you're in a car. They're like, yeah, man, good shit. This car's so heavy, and the tires are so gnarly and big on it, it rides over bumps really nice. It kind of floats over bumps really, really good. So suspension, I give it a, I give it a good, I give it high marks. Um, you don't really feel a ton of the bumps. It's nice, it, it's, it's pretty comfortable. Uh, obviously these seats are nice and bolstered. I'm sitting here and I'm feeling, I'm feeling like I'm in a good sort of, good seating position, I'm high up on the road. I feel like I'm in a real bulky, chunky sort of mean, mean mobile kind of thing. Just to touch on the steering a little bit, I moved the camera a little bit just so I can get a bit better uh, lighting. Uh, steering rack is is heavy. It's very heavy. It's a big car, but you're certainly feeling the heaviness. I'm gonna get on the highway here and give her a nice pull onto the to the freeway. Let's get a pull. Ready? Here we go. Woo! She pulls. That Maxima behind me is in my dust. Gone. That's why you buy the car. You buy it for the big, you buy it for the big V8. You buy it for that big V8, no question. In and out of traffic like, uh, like a dream. Plenty, plenty of power in this bad boy, right? Big car, but again, be, being powered by a big engine, so there's no want for power. It gets you where you need to go right off the bat. It's, it's very, very, um, the power is there when you need it, especially when you're on the highway and stuff of that, and you're in the paddle shifters and stuff of that. Just feels like a brute. I feel like a bully when I'm on the road in this thing. I think it's just the engine, but I feel like everyone's like small around me. They're all like, oh my God, what is that? Oh, it's so loud. Oh, oh. they're all like cowering away from me kind of thing. Um, it's a fun car to be in. I'll give you that. For this price point, you know, this is this is a really really cool package, man. It's a, it's a lot for uh, for the price, a lot. Okay, coming around, we're getting off the off ramp here. That was a bit of a struggle because we had this big transport truck that's delivering a bunch of vehicles. Not mine though. Mine's coming next week. Mine's coming next week. Okay, so we're gonna get into some power here. Let's test out the brakes here. Okay, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. I'd say you know as you go up in the in the range of cars. The brakes get a little bit better. So what we have here, they're just basic brakes, basic steel brakes. If you go into the next ones, you get the Brembo brakes. Those are gonna have a lot more grip. They're a little bit bigger. Uh, the rotors are a little bit bigger and they're gonna give you a bit more stopping power. So um, I would recommend those. Again, those can be optioned on. You don't need carbon ceramics. You're not taking this thing to the track, but bigger brakes, bigger Brembos to, to sort of grip, um, assuming you're, you're always into the power kind of thing, right? Final thoughts. You know, I've had this phone for about a week. You know, I, I like what Dodge is doing. They they stay true to what they're doing. They're you know they're not the lightest track sort of focused vehicles. They're practical cars. They put big, beautiful engines, loud, gorgeous engines into their vehicles. And so you can take a normal family car, and you can smack a huge engine in and make it the big beast of the of the road. You can do that with the, their their two door Challengers. You can do that now with their Durango SUVs and they stay true to what they're doing. So I, I really appreciate that. I like I like the brand. Um, I would love to take something like this or even you know, Red Eye, experience one of those at the, at the drag strip and just see what it's kind of all about, right? It's one thing to get into a Tesla Plaid and it's bang, it's gone and, and effortlessly, but I like the sound, I like the pops, I like the hearing that engine. I think that's, that's for every car guy, I think that's really, really in, important. Not important, but it's just something that we enjoy, we love. You know what I mean? This is a $45,000 car. Uh, you know, I look around and it's like, okay, it's got, it's got decent fit and finish, but the engine makes it so much more enjoyable to be in every day. It's, it's an amazing car to be in. It's put a smile on my face the whole week that I've, that, I've, that I've been. Every single time I hear, I see an underpass, I'm like, all right, let's go, let's go, it's go time, it's go time, bang, you know what I mean? So you have to look at your goals and what you're after in a vehicle. And sound, emotion, I think is, is always number one for me. And so this is this is just a cool car. This is a badass vehicle. 
All right, so if you're in the market for this vehicle, definitely check out the Challenger, check out the, check out the Mustang, check out the Camaro, check out all the little other sort of competitors, uh, do your due diligence. If you've got any questions, feel free to write me in the comments and ask me what you think. If anyone's experienced a red eye or anything uh, higher level than this, or has some information for someone else who's maybe trying to buy one of these cars, uh, feel free to message in the comments um, as to you know what your thoughts are, what your experiences are, because um, I love other people that are looking at this vehicle or watching this um, this this um, this video to be able to sort of get some information here and um, and you know make a wise sort of buying uh, choice. So if you enjoyed the video, guys, uh, hit the subscribe button. I don't want you to miss any of these videos. I do them every week. Got a new car coming. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of uh, mods to it. Gonna be going to uh, the track. Gonna be doing a ton of fun. Th fun things gonna be meeting up with other other people um, who have similar vehicles but I do have a review on a car like this uh, just about every week so make sure you don't miss these videos hit like uh, after a hundred likes on every video I give a gift card out for a hundred uh, hundred bucks to the Apple store um, so I don't want you guys to miss it okay hopefully you got something out of this video um, feel free to send me a, a comment uh, if you're enjoying it or if you have any questions and uh, I'll see you in the next video looking forward to it